because I'm a weird guy. Tonight, I want to show you one of my nerd hobbies. Uh, it has to do with like survival and stuff like that. I want to show you my book out back. Um, really, it's just a hiking bag. Um, bug out back, but, uh, I have a bunch of materials in here that I like to take with me when I go on hiking trips and stuff like that. Camping, um, anything like that. Um, also, it can be one of those things where in the event you're short of supplies and you need, um, say, clean drinking water or fire or shelter, uh, you know, the important stuff in life. Uh, you can look to this bag and it should be able to supply the basic uh, human needs, essentially. It's quite a long list of supplies. There's quite a bit of stuff. Um, but I think it's pretty well thought out and it's taken me quite some time to accumulate what I think is a good solid uh, weight to uh, effectiveness ratio. So uh, this is something you can just toss on. Uh, when you're going out and about, or keep in your car or truck, take on, uh, take with you on hiking trips, etc. So, uh, um, I'll try to put everything in the description, or at very least timestamp, uh, everything I show you. Um, but I don't want to ramble on anymore. I'm just gonna One item at a time so if this is something you enjoy and you want to see more content like this as far as my weird hobbies go survival tactical uh, firearms or related content uh, let me know and I'll try to start incorporating that stuff more again so uh, obviously sort of bag but really just well thought out as far as the spacing goes as far as the uh, storage goes and just the overall accessibility of each zipper pocket etc etc um on top of that it's just a good size i'll go ahead and try it on because see it is it's not too big but it's not too small it's just right um, it's a good bag I really like it it's got a nice padded shoulders it's got a chest strap here uh, to uh, help alleviate some of that pressure um, put on your shoulders on long hikes it does not same time you're not going to be loading this out with a lot of heavy weight so keep that in mind but it's got two major compartments okay it's got the top zipper in here sort of gear you'll have up there and then it's got this molly webbing here
two slots for water or quick accessibility for anything else you might be using. I really like the side pockets on the backpacks because if it's kind of like a dumb pouch, you could just kind of stuff stuff in it. Don't have to worry about unzipping, zipping back up, etc. It's just easily accessible, but also pretty secure. First thing we have is our analogy. Water bottle. And I always want to keep a steel water bottle on me. This can be put over a fire source to boil water or purify water, um, as well as just store water. And uh, I really recommend this particular bottle. Um, I actually just got this one, but I had one like in the past and it got pretty ratty, so I had to get a new one. Uh, so that's kind of the first item. The second item. It's obviously important to have drinking water, so make sure you bring a water bottle with you. The second item I have is this. For a survival bag and human survival in general to be able to create fire and uh, that's gonna allow you to cook purify water stay warm uh, signal for safety anything like that um, and so with that you need to be able to create fire and essential uh, and ease of use piece of kit is just going to be your standard big lighter um, but you want to make sure it's safe so I recommend a waterproof case like that for those um, in the event it gets submerged or you know stepped on or anything like that this case will protect it um, it's a very valuable item a big lighter the second item and this is more of just a A headlamp. This is by a company called Black Diamond. And the thing I like most about this headlamp is that you can default the settings on it to red. And red light is much harder to see at night than white light. Obviously, um, if you're in a survival situation, you may or may not be in a position to where you need to be concealed or more concealed. And so uh, a red light can help you to um, sort of navigate directly in front of you, find things around camp, etc., etc., without feeling like you're completely exposed. The next item that we have, try not to mix these things up, <laughs> is... I have a waterproof battery holder and something like a ziplock would work just fine but um, I had this on my throwing wish list and someone got it for so very cool um, and this can just be used to hold double A's triple A's uh, CR 123's anything like that um, and it is as it sounds it's just a So, uh, obviously, the uh, headlamp requires batteries, um, as well as just another source of fire. If it comes to that, you could use steel wool and uh, get a fire starter with a battery if you need to. Um, can never have enough sources of fire. 
if you need a survival bag. Next up in our bag we have These are, uh, as they say, water purification tablets to purify water uh, in the event that you don't have time to boil water or whatever, and you don't have access to clean, drinkable water. Um, you could go to a creek bed or any other source of water um, and drop a couple of these tablets in. Directions are on here, obviously, for use. Um, but that will purify your drinking water. It takes about 30 minutes, but then you're good to go. And you can drink water without feeling like you're gonna poop your brains out or die of any sort of infection. The next thing that I have, the next thing that I have, the next thing that I have is a knife. This is a bench made knife, very sharp. Just a standard flip out knife. And can be used as a pocket knife, which is what I usually carry it as, but I already have it in this bag, so why not show it to you? Um, I've got, I think, three knives, including this one in this bag. Um, all have different uses, but as far as just keeping something on you, accessible in your pocket, can't go wrong with a good solid uh, fold out knife. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, um, but. I do know a little bit about basic um, sort of medical field treatment uh, for um, stopping heavy bleeding or uh, things of that nature. So I always make sure that I keep a uh, sizable first aid um, kit with me. And so this is a waterproof little bag. Um, got this from uh, a surplus store online, but it's waxed interior and inside of it we have a plethora, 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 plethora of medical equipment uh, items. Dingly word. That's the name of the camo, by the way. Flectorn camouflage. We have a a tourniquet, a tourniquet. and uh, what that's going to do is, in the event that you have heavy bleeding from an extremity, whether it be arms or legs, um, push comes to shove, and you need to get that bleeding to stop, um, whether you get attacked by an animal, or a shot, or anything of that nature. Um, you could place this tourniquet on. I should have said, I do have a Sharpie also in that little small area that I showed earlier. Um, and you're going to want to write the date and time on this tourniquet with that, because you don't want to leave a tourniquet on too long. This is what that looks like. That's a dad gum tourniquet boy. That's a tourniquet. That's a tourniquet. That's a tourniquet. That's a tourniquet. That would be a tourniquet. The next item we have. Um, 
goes down the nose and the back of the throat so that it creates an airway um, for you to breathe and that is obviously pretty extreme but it could save a life your life or someone else's if it ever came to that point up we have Rhino Rescue Vent Chest Seals. Um, and this is used, um, there's two of them, uh, so entry exit wound if you were to be shot in the chest or impaled or something of the nature. Um, but yeah, uh, these are vented chest seals and so for sucking chest wounds um, you would place that over the wound from the front. stuff, but, um, if you're watching to this point, is a uh, uh, hemostat, I think is the word we're looking for. I think that's the word. I don't know, but it's like supposed to create um, clotting faster than uh, normal. So you would uh, fill the wound channel with these gauze in the uh, compound and the quick clot. Uh, compound is going to create um, a clotting so that you bleed all over the place. Pretty hardcore, but that's what that's for. Stop. This is an array Israeli bandage. And it's essentially just a wrap. A uh, self-containing wrap that you'd place around those combat gauze to uh, apply pressure. And keep pressure on a wound uh, to uh, sort of limit the amount of blood loss um, if it came to that point. And uh, all these things together plus a tourniquet, you probably will not. Next up, we have just some standard antibacterial wipes. that. So, um, this is more applicable than the other stuff we've been showing, but, um, it's always a good idea to have some antibacterial um, wipes uh, when you're out and about, say you're doing a camping trip or something of that nature, and you get nicked, cut uh, with a knife, or you get scraped or bit by, you know, anything. Civilization, you want to be able to disinfect and clean that area. 
Uh, so having some something like this, just a pack of these, is very valuable uh, to keep any sort of infectious uh, or infections rather away and any wounds cleaned. So that's what these are for. Um, okay, and the last item we have in this bag. Really, this is just to be used for um, keeping the warmth in, in an emergency situation. Um, a reflective blanket is supposed to keep like 90% of the uh, body heat inside. So um, if you're ever like in a very cold environment, stuck outside, um, and you don't have access to fire, and you're in a really bad situation, you need to maintain and preserve your body, your core body temperature, you would wrap yourself in something like this. And um, could save your life. So, all right. Now that we're done with the uh, dark and depressing uh, medical side of the kit that I keep with me, um, we can get to the sort of makeshift um, tent setup, living setup uh, material. So, um, the first thing we had was the um, sort of light fire, um, water purification, sort of food, drink, um, navigation side of things, um, then the medical, the medical side of things, the medical, 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 and, uh, and now we got the, sort of the, um, the camp, um, if you will, or a sleeping situation, if that makes sense, it's the shelter, um, so, a um, poncho, a rain poncho. I got this one from a military surplus website. This is German. This is a German rain poncho. The seams are like covered in glued. Um, well, it's very legit uh, poncho as well. Obviously, uh, in high winds, um, if you're using this as a tarp, you could um, tie a ridge line rope from tree to tree or any other hard item and uh, buckle this thing down uh, and not have to worry about the wind ripping out the eyelets because the, uh, the metal construction is going to be stronger than the plastics on the much cheaper. Um, and the buttons are metal, so, uh, the contact's real firm on those. So, um, the reason why I keep a rain poncho is, one, um, in the event you get rained on, you can wear it as a poncho. Also, um, military-grade ponchos, um, can be completely unbuttoned and made into a uh, tarp, a rectangular square-shaped tarp. And then, like I mentioned a minute ago, you could uh, use rope or nylon paracord to turn it into a covered shelter um, so that you can stay out of the rain, snow, whatever. Um, with that, I also keep um, camping spikes. Also, I keep a little bouquet, if you will, of 
with zip ties. Um, you never know why you might need a zip tie, but they definitely come in handy for fastening things temporarily. So I always keep a few zip ties on me. Next up, we have a fixed blade um, Damascus knife. And this was made by a knife maker that I know. Um, out of Arkansas. Um, and it's a beautiful knife. See if you can see it in the light here. And it's sort of a teardrop design. Uh, the guy's name is Claude that makes these. I'll have to post links if I can find his website, but um, this is more of a small, um, meticulous use knife for skinning or um, creating tinder or anything like that for a fire. So, next up, and this was gifted by one of our subscribers on the throne list on my uh, link tree. This is a uh, So obviously the importance of eating um, in a survival situation is um, urgent. Uh, to have a calorie intake um, is important, obviously, so you don't starve to death. But, um, you know, in the situation where you might find yourself uh, away from the house for a long time and something is to go bad or you've lost your food provisions and you have to start from scratch and you don't have anything else on you, um, at least you can um, maybe catch a fish. Or at least give yourself a shot to catch a fish. Um, if you're not familiar with setting snare traps or anything like that, you don't have a firearm to hunt or bow, you can't find any berries or any natural vegetation without poisoning yourself. I think having something like this in a survival kit is a no-brainer and uh, could easily save your life if you're not knowledgeable on vegetation and hunting, trapping, all that stuff. Next we have This is a a source of open flame. So essentially, the idea is um, you would keep this on you, and so you've got your bic lighter, for instance. Obviously, the bic lighter is a a fuel source. Or a source of fire, but it uses fuel. So, um, you don't want to burn out your pick. You don't want to burn out, burn out, burn out your pick. You want to use it as little as possible so that you can uh, continue to use that as a source of fire when you need it. The thing about a, a candle is that Although it does use a source of fuel, which is the wax, um, you don't have to use your bic um, to have access to fire. You could light one of these with your bic, only use a fraction of a second of the fuel from the bic, and then you have an open source of flames to start fires or uh, anything like that.
not use it all. Um, I think this is very important to have. Next we have just a standard electrical tape and sort of like the zip ties. Just um, the, uh, the amount of different scenarios that you could use this in, in a survival situation. Whether it's to use, uh, to fasten something or to protect electrical, to repair something, etc., etc. Not uh, just some adhesive electrical tape can uh, go a long ways, obviously. And it doesn't take up much room, and the amount of uses for it are uh, astronomical. The last thing I have in this kit is a compass. And obviously, um, a compass isn't of any value really if you're not familiar with your surroundings so if you wanted to be really serious about it um, you would make sure that you would think ahead um, keep a map with you depending on where you're located in the world and realize or know where in general you're located on that map at all times if the cell phones were to ever go down for whatever reason and you needed to um, you know if it, maybe your cell phone you don't have a service or something like that um, you can at least um, look at this compass and figure a general direction in which way you can get to a waterway or a street or anything just to get out of your immediate danger area and so I, I think it's very important to keep a compass on you um, It's a good compass. And it's a good compass, and it's a good compass. That pretty much wraps it up for my survival kit. Um, I think it pretty much covers the basics. Hopefully you found that entertaining. Uh, maybe you even found it a little relaxing. Um, and if you ever want to see a uh, role play with any of this kind of stuff, Feel free to let me know if you found this relaxing and want to see more in-depth stuff or in-depth um, sort of descriptive information on anything in this kit. I'd be more than happy to uh, break that out and talk about it more. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found this entertaining and uh, informational. And I will see you again next time.